Okay, we're gonna have a look at one with a tricky bit of um, limits here. So we're gonna look at G. We've been asked to integrate between zero and pi over three, sine x, ln, sec x, dx. Are there any suggestions of which one we should take as u? Okay, let's take the ln of sec x, which means that v dash must be sine x. Probably good to take this one because I think that's going to be easier to differentiate. Now, when you differentiate ln of sec x, it's going to be over sec x, because we know that ln of blah goes to 1 over blah, multiplied by the derivative of blah. The derivative of sec x is, is sec x tan x. And when this simplifies, the sec x cancels, and we just get that u dash is just tan x, OK? What would v be equal to? Minus cos x, because uh, minus cos x integrates to sine x. So we're going to try and work out this thing that we've got here. Let's try and take up a bit of space. So we're going to do u, v. So we get minus ln sec x multiplied by cos x. I have to make sure that this is bracketed, because it's the ln of sec x all being multiplied by cos x. Probably I should have written cos x at the beginning, but it's too late. Um, <laughs> 0 and pi over 3. Then what I've got is the integral of these two things that I've got here. So I'm so going to, minus sine. it's going to be minus the integral of minus cos x tan x. One second, Mr. Kira, I think you're right though, between 0 and pi over 3. Now, yeah, you're right, cos x multiplied by tan x. If tan x is sine x over cos x and you're multiplying it by cos x, you just get sine x. So this is going to change into a plus sine x. So you've got minus, sorry, the, um, <laughs> can't even speak. This, this thing plus the integral from 0 to pi over 3 of sine x dx. Um, we could either start substituting in, but I probably prefer to get all of the, the limits before I do any of that substitution. Um, if you wanted to here, does anybody spot what they think they could do with this minus ln sec one x? Good, because the minus at the beginning is like doing it to the power of minus 1, which means to do the reciprocal of it. So actually, minus, let's just do this somewhere else, minus ln of sec x is the same as the ln of sec x to the power of minus 1, which is ln of 1 over sec x, which is ln of ln of cos x. So actually minus ln sec x is ln cos x. I think that's going to make the substitution a little bit easier. So I have got, I'm going to write the cos x to begin with now. So I've got cos x ln cos x between 0 and pi over 3. What's the integral of sine x? Minus cos. minus cos x. So I've got plus the integral of minus cos x between 0 and pi over 3. I think it's better to do this as one large bit. So I'm actually going to combine these two things together. So I have cos x ln cos x minus cos x between 0 and pi over 3. Now I just need to find out what cos x, of cos, sorry, I need to find out the two things that I need to know are what is the cos of pi over 3 and what is the cos of 0? Cos of pi over 3 is a half, because it's cos of 60, which is a half. And the cos of 0 <coughs> is, is 1. OK, now I've got these bits of substitution. That might help me when I do these things that I've got. Now, um, when people have done their limits, I've noticed people are obsessed with using the square brackets. The square brackets are for when we have the limits we're about to substitute in. After we start substituting in, we technically should go back to our curved brackets. It's just easier to communicate what you're doing. So we've got, for the first bit, with pi over 3 going in, I've got a half ln a half minus a half. Then I'm going to subtract. This is a bit I haven't seen people doing very much of. I've seen them trying to just like do it all in their head. So I'm doing this bit when I substituted in pi over 3 minus this bit, which is when I'm going to substitute in 0. When I substitute in 0, I get, well, that's going to be 1 ln 1. Zero. zero. OK, 1 ln 1, because ln 1 is 0. So it's going to be a 0 minus 1. So I've got a half ln a half minus a half, minus minus 1 becomes plus 1. 
So it's a half ln a half plus a half, because minus a half plus one is a half. And I would factorize that, so I get a half ln a half plus one. But let's say they don't want your answer as a natural logarithm of a half. They want their answer as a natural logarithm of two because they might ask for that. Okay, This is a kind of annoying thing they would do. I don't want this to be ln a half anymore. I want it to be something to do with ln two. What do you think ln a half and ln two? How can I rewrite ln a half? Yeah, it's going to be minusing it. So ln a half is the same as ln of two to the power of minus one, because two to the power of minus one is a half. So then I can bring that power down, and I've got minus ln 2 plus 1. So it ends up as a half 1 minus ln 2. That is your answer, where everything has been expressed in terms of ln 2. So there's an awful lot of substitution work that goes on here. If you find yourself completely tangled up in this substitution in an exam-like context, what my recommendation would be to you is to make sure that you've got to this stage and I would literally write out by hand with the things substituted in. You could just write cos of pi over 3, ln cos of pi over 3, minus cos of pi over 3. Write it out, and then if you can't do any more, just move on. If you can't do that, simplifying because you're too stressed out. But at least show the examiner you understand how limits works and substituting in. What was your question? Oh, sorry, I bet the minus ln. Because I didn't do your that stuff. And I bet it was kind of messy. Maybe? Uh, it's more neat to do it's easier because it's everything's in everything's L minus ln two instead. Yeah. So maybe actually this wasn't Maybe this wasn't the best way of doing these things. Okay. I just thought it probably could be. But you're right. It probably wouldn't have given you the ln a half. It would have given you minus ln two instead. But you came up with the same bit at the end. Okay. So not always the best way of doing this. But I think this way uh, sort of works out all right. Um, I have got one final example that we are going to look at on integration by parts, and then. Uh, I was going to say I promise you, but I sort of promise you it does get a bit easier after this bit. This is definitely the peak, um, or should I say this is the turning point of, um, this is the turning point of it really. This is the hardest bit, okay? There's many turning points. We're going to go. So this is an unusual one, and everybody should be paying attention to this one because we have got, um, we're trying to integrate e to the x sine x with respect to x. Now, usually... What thing do we pick for you to begin with? Or yeah, ln x takes priority. Then we would just take the polynomial. We'd take the x squared, the x cubed, the x, or something like that. But we've got neither of these things here. Does anybody remember which one of these should come first? <laughs> the sine x will take, the prob will take it. Because if we think of that Li8 that we talked about, the exponential is going to be the last one. So we're going to pick the sine x. But you know when you do integration by parts, the, you'll get a sine x, and it will differentiate to a cos x. And so you're going to get another thing that will be a cos x e to the x. And then you're going to have a problem with that. So we're going to just explore what happens here and see if we can spot the, the trick that happens. This did actually come up in an exam a few years ago. So, OK, so u is, we said u was going to be sine x, right? Mm -hmm. So u dash is cos x. And that must mean that v dash is e to the x. So v is e to the x. OK, because that just integrates. I'm just going to, I made that a bit big. So I'm just going to kind of shrink that down for a second. OK, let's just take this here. So when I'm going to integrate this, I get no, no limits. Notice how there's no limits here. I've just got uv. So I've got uh, e to the x sine x minus the integral of these two. We started with those two. We had those two, now we're getting these two. Minus the integral of e to the x cos x. Yeah. It's going to keep going. But let's see what happens, OK? We're now going to gonna deal with this bit that we've got here. So what should we pick for u? So, cos x. so u we're going to pick as cos x, which means that u dash is minus sine, minus sine x. v dash is e to the x. So v is e to the x. Right, let's work on that. So we've now got the same bit as before, e to the x sine x minus, and I'm going to do this whole bit in brackets here so that it doesn't become too much of a mess. We're going to minus these two things, 
which is our e to the x cos x, minus the integral of, well, we've already had those two things, so it's now these two things, the minus e to the x sine x dx, OK? That's the problem, because we've got another thing that we couldn't integrate before, which is super annoying, right? So let me just tidy up what we've got here. We've got e to the x sine x minus e to the x cos x plus minus. What's a plus minus going to be? So this is now a minus, because this is a plus and we're multiplying it. Minus e to the x sine x dx. So we have wonderfully said this, but we've got stuck with another thing here. Can anybody spot? What do you think we could do here that we could actually solve it, Hamza? Cos factor of sine. Exactly. We can take this, because of the fact that it's not, it's not actually infinite, it actually loops around quite quickly back to itself. We can now take this thing and we can add it to the other side. So we get 2 e to the x sine x dx is e to the x sine x minus e to the x cos x. So our answer of e to the x sine x dx is a half e to the x. I'm just factorizing sine x minus cos x plus c. OK, I should have probably put a plus c at some point. But really, really weird example where there is neither an ln nor is there a polynomial. I mean, if this came up, this will be the last question in the exam paper. I'm not showing you this because I expect everybody in the class to be able to do this perfectly. I'm showing you this so that if you were to come up against something like this, that it, it's possible you can see that this adds back onto this. This is a very rare kind of example of it cycling around. And I was impressed as I was talking about this. A couple of you were like, oh, it's just going to keep going and going. Because that's the feeling you've, you've, those people who said it's going to keep going and going, they've got the hang of what integration by parts is. They've, they can predict what things are going to look like. So that's really, really impressive. It's not fun, OK? But I haven't got another question like this to do. I mean, obviously, you could try it with e to the x cos x if you wanted to. But I'm just going to leave you with this for part of your notes. And then we're going to do one.